Hi everyone, let's talk about Museum Picture or Witch. I just did a full playthrough for if you'd like to see the game in action and see it all laid out and everything, it's linked in the description. It's also on Kickstarter right now. That's the reason that I'm doing a video at this point. The link to the campaign page is in the description and you can see all the stuff they've got going on there and see how to get a hold of it if you are interested. And like all of the Kickstarters for the last few months anyway, uh, I was paid to make the playthrough, so make of that what you will. But hey, the playthrough will give you a much better idea of whether you would like the game than anything I'm going to say here. This is just if you want to see it, isn't it? But you know that. So, uh, yeah, I haven't played the original museum, so I can't really compare them. I know that it's it's not, you know, it's not just a reskin. It's taken some of the stuff from museum and added a lot of its uh, new stuff. And it's themed around, uh, you know, uh, art gallery rather than uh, just museums in general. So I, I'm coming into it fresh just at Pictura, but I absolutely love this. I uh, I was like, even when we were just setting up the first game, I like just arranging the museums on the you know, general player board, uh, having their own trends and you know exchanging cards with them can earn you some points. But if you take a card they like, then it'll lose you some points. Starting your game with starting your turn with that little exchange is a nice touch that you get these two cards, but you can kind of you morph the cards in your hand a little bit when you are playing cards that it costs you a card as well. So you are often giving up things that you really want or that could push you in certain directions to get out the cards that you really want right now or you are trying to get cards out for the trend that's for the current round that's going to get you some extra points or the patrons that are out currently that are going to get you some special abilities or some points and can themselves build into more bonuses later on. The fact that you can add paintings to your gallery from other people's discard piles is a fantastic extra touch as well because it's it's a great example of positive interaction that uh, if if it's in your discard pile you chose to put it in there you you know, knew the risk if it, it's something you really wanted or something you think someone else might want then you know maybe keep it in your hand or put it in your gallery because it's it's a risk you know sometimes you might end up putting cards in there that you kind of think I do want that for the future but not right now and I have to discard something to get it into my gallery uh, but the fact that you can play cards from anyone's discard pile and it loses you a point and gains them a point which in a two player game is you know it basically earns the person who had the card taken two points uh, because it's always going to be that same person uh, but it's you know it not only is it a great way of having more options out onto the table ways of you know being bothered about what every other player is doing and what is happening to each of their discard piles it means that you can get more cards into your gallery as well because whereas usually you play a card from your hand into your gallery and then discard another one into your warehouse to be able to play a card if you're playing it from other people's discard piles it only costs you one card because you lose the point they gain a point and you replace their card in the discard pile and that might be something good for them or it's another option for everybody else to be looking at i think it is one of the things that is, you know, it, it works great in a two player game, but I think is going to be enhanced with three or four players just because there are going to be more options out there. And it's not like, you know, if I spend an action doing the inventory and taking back my discard pile, well, that means on your turn, you haven't got those options. But in a three or four player game, if one player does that, chances are there's going to be other discard piles to look through. And there are cards that are like, you can play a card from any discard pile. Well, yeah, you're just going to have more options, aren't you? So I think that's going to be something that's going to be enhanced with more players, but I've only played at two. I love the, you know, the, the puzzle of arranging your gallery as well it's great that you can rearrange it at any time because uh, not only do you you miss things things changed quite a lot over the course of this game what you know, throw out all of those options and your personal trend board as well the abilities you have right now you know a, a lot of the things you thought you were going for you might not end up going for just based on what comes out so yet yeah, your the priority in your gallery might change and it's great that you can kind of take it all out and rearrange it all but having to have these uh, collections connected in some way in this five by five grid is a really nice touch and especially if your gallery is starting to get full then it's uh, it can end up being a nice tricky puzzle to get all of that to fit together so all of your collections are going to score at the end and then that you can score your collections as the game's going on so not get very many points but unlock more abilities and you know just for doing these exhibitions that might be with no points to you if you do five exhibitions which is the most that you are allowed to do that's 60 points at the end of the game which can be a huge chunk of your points there are so many ways of 
you know, ending up with a good score. It's not just in, you know, doing your trend card or having these perfect collections. It's, it, it just ba it ends up based on how you, I've lost all my words. It ends up based on the path that you took throughout the game, based on all of these different elements and based on what the other people were doing as well. If you could spot what they were doing and uh, maybe not let those cards be so easily accessed by them. Although it's, it's hard to know if somebody's going for a particular artist because uh, yeah, there's gonna be, with such a large picture deck, like these are all the cards we didn't get to in uh, in our game. Uh, it's, it's a fairly quick game as well. It says uh, an hour on the box and yeah, once you are kind of into the flow of it, I can absolutely see that because it's, it's basically a race to 50 points, but as always in these games that are triggered by uh, someone achieving that many points, you might have shot yourself in the foot by doing that because all of, a lot of the points are going to come at the end through uh, either the collections that you've got or you know filling your gallery or doing however many exhibitions. You know, it's it's not just set in stone that just because you're behind 20 or 30 points, you can end up ahead by much more with all of this endgame stuff that's going on. But with the painting deck being this massive, if you are really going for things that involve particular painters and things, it, it's best to kind of have some kind of idea what's going on but not really pin yourself just to one thing because that's when you know there, there is some luck of the draw but I don't, I don't think it's kind of a make or break to the whole game you know, that's why you get rewarded most for having the cards from a particular artist but even so i, I don't feel like in our limited experience of just uh, just a couple of games I, I don't feel like you know the the game would have been completely uh, broken by uh, just drawing uh, perfect things. But yeah, it's, it's gonna make a difference if that uh, really bothers you. But uh, yeah, if, if you were looking for you know more standard interaction, more negative interaction, aggressive interaction, where you are, you know, I, th I think there's something in the original museum where you were allowed to just put things in other people's discard piles that will uh, cause them to have bigger penalties. And you know, there's, there's no stealing from <laughs> each other's uh, galleries and stuff. That's uh, perfect for us, but I understand that uh, it, based on your playstyle, you might want that kind of thing in there. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it wants uh, a lot of table space. And yeah, I can see that even just me, I'm, I'm kind of bad for analysis paralysis of getting stuck on your turn and working out what I'm gonna do with all of these kind of things up in the air. Uh, with, uh, with another player like that at the table as well, it can end up uh, taking a lot longer, but that's kind of not really exclusive to this. That's a lot of games that end up making that happen. And I am just really impressed by this and intrigued to uh, play the original museum and see how it uh, compares. But just based on Pictora, I've absolutely loved it so far. But as always, the playthrough. Watch the playthrough and uh, see if uh, that interests you rather than anything that I said, because who am I? I'm Tom, nice to meet you. Bye, everyone. <laughs>